when the international media will stop portraying this as a claim, not as a people under oppression that has the right. Every life lost is a tragedy. You know this best. We the, the crown prince also conveyed to Abbas that the Gulf Kingdom remains steadfast in its support for the Palestinian people in that. Assalamu alaikum, brothers and sisters. I hope you're well. In today's digital age, we find ourselves surrounded by a constant barrage of information delivered through innumerable media outlets and social platforms. We are constantly hooked in our mobile phones and TV screens and assume that whatever the media is showing and presenting before us is indeed true. But are we really being fed the truth or are we being manipulated and controlled by these media outlets? In the ongoing crisis of the Israel-Palestine war, the media has shown a new face to its viewers by trying to paint a black and white image of the whole incident. On the one hand, Israel is depicted as a victim and innocent, while Palestinians in all their actions collectively are being turned barbaric and inhumane. Hussam Saeed Zomlat, who is the Palestine ambassador to the United Kingdom, was invited for an interview on various news channels like the BBC and CNN, just after the current state of crisis unfolded. And in those interviews, the media person was trying with all their might to make Hassam feel as if he belongs to the party of extremists and he should be accountable for all the activities of the extremists that are taking place in the war zone. What is the Palestinian Authority going to do about today's attacks? You know, the media would invite me when an Israeli is, is harmed. But why, did it, why wasn't I invited to discuss the murder of a Palestinian boy or girl only in the last 48 hours? Why is it always when Israelis are harmed? Now, this is also about how this whole conflict is perceived. When the international media will stop portraying this as a clash or as confrontation, not as a people under oppression that has, the right, that has the right to resist illegality. Uh, Every uh, uh, life lost is a tragedy. And we know this best, we the Palestinian people, because only this month, uh, 11 Palestinians were killed by the state-sponsored occupying army, including five children. We have been set on focusing on the root cause of all this, set on how do we break away from this 75-year-old deadly cycle. It's so shocking that while Hussam was trying to be cornered and blamed, none of the leading media channels were actually condemning the atrocities Israel had committed and is committing against innocent Palestinians. Additionally, when reporting the number of deaths that occurred since this war started, words that reflected extremism and were more intense were used for the Israel side, while soft and less intense words were carefully selected for the Palestinians, as if they don't deserve any sympathy for any of their losses because, in fact, it is a daily affair for die. This just shows the level of biasness that the news media have stooped down to. Apart from news bias, social media platforms can't be trusted to be fair or unbiased. The largest social media platform, Facebook, is showing its true colors now that it has deleted and suppressed content by Palestinians and their supporters, including posts from the year 2021. And this is not what people only feel, as Deborah Brown, senior digital rights researcher and advocate at Human Rights Watch, confirmed this biased activity on Facebook. Facebook has suppressed content posted by Palestinians and their supporters speaking out about human rights issues in Israel and Palestine, said Deborah Brown, senior digital rights researcher and advocate at Human Rights Watch. Anyone can still argue that Facebook might not want to be involved and support the ideologies of war and the reasons behind them. If this is true, then why was Facebook not bothered by the posts that were uploaded by the supporters of Russia or Ukraine? when the Russia-Ukraine war took place. In 2021, when Gaza was under heavy attack for almost 11 days, Facebook also restricted and even deleted profiles that posted any post that exposed any form of wrongdoing by Israel. Activists and digital watchdogs have noted a significant surge in limitations imposed on online Palestinian content. This has resulted in the restriction or complete deletion of accounts belonging to more than 300 Palestinian journalists and activists across a range of social media platforms, including Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. 
Starting in 2022, the Israeli Occupation Army's cyber unit experienced an 800% increase in its request to take down Palestinian content. The media does not want you to know the reality. The media wants to show you a distorted and misinterpreted version of only one side of the story so that it can brainwash you and make you believe that Islam is the enemy of humanity. A Nazi propaganda minister, Joseph Goebbels, once said, about his strategy. If you repeat a lie often enough, it becomes the truth. We advise our viewers to stop trusting these media outlets. And even if you hear about any news, try to verify it as much as possible before believing it. As now, lies have many buyers while truth has none. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us against the treachery of the media. Ameen. Assalamu alaikum brothers and sisters. I hope you are well. As Israel is applying its full force against the innocent Palestinians and as more and more destruction is being planned and executed by the enemies of Islam while getting full support from the rest of the world, we desperately want to see a ray of hope so that these distressing times get over as soon as possible. Now, maybe the time has come when the Muslim nations are gathering together. According to Saudi state media on Tuesday, Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman of Saudi Arabia assured Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas of his support and commitment to preventing any further escalation of the conflict. The official Saudi press agency reported that the Crown Prince also conveyed to Abbas that the Gulf Kingdom remains steadfast in its support for the Palestinian people in their pursuit of their rightful entitlements, such as a dignified existence, the realization of their dreams and the establishment of fair and enduring peace. On Sunday, the Moroccan Foreign Ministry additionally requested an urgent gathering of Arab foreign ministers within the Arab League, which was accepted. The purpose of this meeting is to engage in discussions and coordinate efforts concerning the deteriorating conditions in the Gaza Strip and the emergence of military operations targeting civilian populations. Arab League foreign ministers have planned to meet today to discuss all possible ways to stop the Israeli aggression against the Gaza Strip the pan-Arab group said in a statement, We Muslims might be divided by countries, but we are all part of the Muslim Ummah and we surely are deeply affected when we see our innocent Muslim brothers and sisters suffering in the most brutal manner and yet getting all the hatred from the rest of the world at the same time. The Prophet Muhammad said, You see the believers as regards their being merciful among themselves and showing love among themselves and being kind resembling one body, so that if any part of the body is not well, then the whole body shares with sleeplessness and fever with it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unite the Muslim Ummah. Ameen. That's it for today. Hmm. Wow. What's going on, guys? I know something is going on, but I don't just get it. The first video we watched, Palestine ambassador for United Kingdom, Hearing from him actually shocked me. Him saying that most news channels are always in a hurry to give out news about Israel. I just don't understand and I don't know how true this is. But this is heartbreaking, guys. Hearing, hearing the ambassador talk and you know that he's talking out of you know pain, disappointment. He's just hoping that things will be better like i'm sure he's just talking about fairness he wants there to be fairness he wants peace he wants unity he wants you know <sighs> wow the second video guys um the saudi prince i was really impressed by what he said for him supporting the philistine and also you know praying for peace the message the message he actually gave was really beautiful i love that and all i can say is that i'm praying for peace i hope all this whole thing end as soon as possible it's so heartbreaking to hear this news this bad news day in day out i just want both Palestinian country and israel country i just want there to be peace even though i'm not a muslim I also feel for these people that are going through a lot. I feel for the families of those that have lost their loved ones. And I feel for those people that are still fighting to survive. It's so painful, guys. It's so, so painful. Like, 
<sighs> I'm so speechless. All I can pray for is peace. Peace. Let there be peace. And may Allah protect other people trying to survive. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.